In this video, we'll be looking at uh, the beta-glucose polysaccharide, which is cellulose. So in this, uh, on the screen here, you can see there are two beta-glucose molecules. And the reason why you can tell there are beta-glucose molecules is that uh, the hydroxyl group on the carbon number one is above the ring. Okay, so you can see that it's in both of them. Whereas alpha glucose would have the hydroxyl group below the ring, uh, when, uh, specifically the hydroxyl group attached to carbon number one there. So both of these are beta glucose molecules, and similar to alpha glucose molecules, they can join together by one four glycosidic bonds. Now, just as a reminder, remember that's carbon number one, that's carbon number four, so the same thing on this molecule here. The thing is here you can see is that the hydroxyl group on carbon number one here is too far away from the hydroxyl group on carbon number four of the other molecule. So basically, this sort of, uh, the condensation reaction can't really happen between these two because they're just simply too far away. Uh, what the hydroxyl group just can't steal the hydrogen uh, atom from the other hydroxyl group. So the reaction won't actually happen. However, in cellulose, the alternate beta-glucose molecule would actually flip upside down. So that's what we call inverted, and it will look a bit like this. Again, we've got carbon number one here and carbon number four there. The hydroxyl group now is a lot closer together, so they can actually uh, do a condensation reaction to form a one four glycosidic bond. So same as before, this hydroxyl group, for example, would steal the hydrogen from the other hydroxyl group, which will then go off to make a water molecule, and then that carbon will then join with, uh, the carbon number one here would join with that oxygen from carbon number four to make a one four glycosidic bond. Then the next one you can see in carbon number one of this particular car, uh, of beta glucose, the hydroxyl group is below the ring, and imagine if this, uh, this beta glucose is over there as well, the hydroxyl groups are actually close to each other, so they can actually join together again to make another one. So the whole thing, if imagine we've got four of them, it will look a bit like this. So here, for example, let's say we've got another, um, another beta glucose on that side. So you can see carbon number four here. The hydroxyl group on carbon number four is quite close by, so it can steal the hydroxyl group again. And then same thing here on the other, uh, on the other side. This beta glucose on the, f on the right is again inverted upside down. So same thing happens. Uh, the hydroxyl groups are close to each other, so a condensation reaction will occur. So here they would just be making the water molecules. And if we look at the whole thing chained up together, then it would look a bit like this. So if I do a simplified diagram, then you can see that according to that, it would form a one fork like acidic bond here. Then there will be another one there. And then another last one here as well. So you can see that it's constantly doing the same thing, but it's just that the one fork like acid bond is the other way around. So if you look at the whole thing, you can see here when the alternate beta glucose molecule is inverted, then they can join uh, together to make one fork like acid bonds. And similar to amylose in starch with the alpha glucose, if you've got one fork like acid bonds, then it would form a straight chain. So imagine it continues on and either on either ends of this particular cellulose molecule. And actually, each cellulose molecule would form a straight chain, and in the cellulose that we find in plant cell walls, the cellulose chains actually join together to form microfibrils, so it looks a bit like this. So this diagram here shows how the cellulose chains are joined together with the hydrogen bonds. Now, even though individual hydrogen bonds are very weak, when there's a bunch of them together, they actually can become quite strong. So uh, as a microfibril, uh, it's a strong fibrous structure. And remember how structure always determines the function or properties of a molecule. So with a fibrous structure, um, then they can actually provide structural support. That's why we find cellulose in plants cell wall. So there you have it. So this is how beta glucose molecules can join together with one four glycosidic bonds to make straight cellulose fibers. Uh, so just to summarize, remember in cellulose, the alternate beta glucose molecule is inverted. So meaning it turns upside down uh, in order for the two hydroxyl groups on carbon one and carbon four to be close together in order to do condensation reaction to make that one four glycosidic bonds. 
And because they've only got one four glycosidic bonds, they can form a straight chain. And all of those chains together can be joined together with the hydrogen bonds, which form a microfibril, which is quite strong, and also then therefore be able to provide structural support in plant's cell wall. So that's the structure of cellulose, which is a beta-glucose polysaccharide. <laughs>